Okay, so how can you save 25% up to maybe 60% of tokens using this new file format known as Tune, which is token-oriented object notation. Now you're going to see the Tune, what it looks like here up above. Let me get out of click mode. And it's not quite YAML, it's not quite JSON, it's not quite CSV, right? We have this converted, I've ran a, a, a conversion to convert this from JSON into Tune, okay? And this is a PyETS show IP interface brief output. So if we look here, Tune, it only became, a, 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 you know, available to me like maybe a week ago. I think this is very, very new. But as you can see here, the workflow is JSON, encode it into Tune, and then sell it, send it to the LLM with a 30 to 60% reduction. All right, and you can see here the retrieval accuracy actually goes up, and the average token use goes down. All right, now there's all kinds of documentation here, and they kind of explain uh, you know, AI is becoming cheaper and more accessible, but, you know, large context windows are large for larger input data. Tokens still cost money, and the standard JSON is verbose and expensive. YAML conveys the same information with fewer tokens. And then Tune actually breaks it down with even fewer tokens. And they have all of their metrics here in numbers. Now, you know, I see some people saying it's the same as CSV or whatever. Um, it's pretty close to CSV. CSV and Tune look very, very close. But I've gone through the trouble. What, are you going to make a Jinja template and turn every JSON output into a well-formed CSV? I doubt it. I doubt it. I don't know what you're talking about. All right, here's the data sets with the CSV. And CSV is less tokens. But like I said, what are you going to do? Are you going to make a Jinja template for everything? I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. You can just use the CLI here and convert your input JSON into output tune. That's that's it. Now, let me open up another folder. Do I have those files? No, I don't have those files. Uh, but anyway, so what I did here was I asked it um, to help me understand the interfaces. It ran show IP interface brief, which returns JSON, which I ran through. I ran through this little new function I wrote, tune with stats. And I convert that JSON from the PyTS output into tune and show the token savings and all that and return the tune string and the savings text. This is all part of my PyTS uh, extension here for Gemini CLI. So, right, it answers all the questions with even greater answers. Like, this is actually a very, very good answer. All the up interfaces and all the down interfaces, even though I didn't ask it to sort them like that. Right now, this is a limited sandbox and there's not much I can really do on it. Um, how about... Uh, something like this. Can we run show interfaces and check the counters per interface looking for errors or problems? So instead of show IP interface brief, can we use just show interfaces? And again, show interfaces is a lot of JSON because there's a lot of keys per interface. Uh, and now this is, let's see what it looks like as Tune. Love me a new file format. Uh, and this makes sense, right? J JSON and YAML, machine readable, human readable. All right, so check it out. So I saved 16% and did it just do, so there's all my counters in this new Tune format right and it still has all the data all the context it needs but without the json and yaml characters pretty cool and um i save 16 percent here 
And here's the great answer, right? So input Q drops on GI00, right? All this great tabular information. And we save 16% on the tokens. Um, how about, um, can you check the licensing, the version, and other show commands to give me a sense of this platform. So we did interfaces at 16% uh, show interface. So now we're going to run, actually, they love this, that it's parallel. So it's actually going to run three parallel commands here. Show version, so license summary, show boot var. And if there's parsers for those, and there should be parsers for all of those, we're going to move from JSON, so a 20% savings here from the show version. And it is still human readable. It's very, very readable. So a 20% reduction there. And we're waiting for license summary and boot var. Here's license summary, 33% reduction in tokens. And boot var we're going to wait on. So I'm clearly, now again, I think of it at, it doesn't matter what end of the scale. If you're trying to save money and you're a small enterprise and you want to use AI, so 7.5% uh, on the boot var because there's probably no parser for boot var. That's fine. Uh, but there's the savings. So, um, again, all this took for me in my existing PyTS pipeline, and this could apply to a REST API pipeline, anything you get JSON back from, take one intermediate step and convert it to Tune, and then send it to the AI, and you're going to see between like you've seen here, 10 to 30, they have benchmarks of 60% reduction in tokens. Now, some of my customers in the enterprise world are dealing with tens to hundreds to millions of dollars in AI spend. And what if we could immediately reduce that just by changing the file format that we interface with? I guarantee you most of that is JSON that people are sending AIs. It's more likely JavaScript object notation. So with a little shim, we can cut those costs anywhere between, let's call it 30 to 60%. Without, not only without losing quality in the answers, but improving the quality of the answers by about 5%. And if you've seen that today, wonderful, wonderful answers from this still human readable tune format. All right, well, stay tuned. I'm going to be doing a little bit more, but um, I'm off to a great start with this format. And let me know what you think. And uh, please feel free to add the Gemini extension for PyTS. Uh, I'll see where else I can apply this to. Thank you.